Hey everyone, this is Nick LaRue at the South Georgia Film Festival on behalf of Film Snobbery, of course, over at filmsnobbery.com. We are here at Valdosta State University, VSU, beautiful campus on a beautiful day. It's getting a little darker outside because I think it's going to rain later, but beautiful time. We are at the festival. I have a very special guest that I want to talk to. Uh, I'm going to talk to in a moment for everyone to listen to. That is the festival director. I'm going to let him introduce himself now and we're going to get into it. Uh, hello, sir. Hi, uh, my name is Jason Brown. Uh, I am the festival director and founder of the South Georgia Film Festival and I'm an associate professor here at Valdosta State University. Another teacher. I've got a lot of teachers, you know. I feel like I should be getting credit somehow uh, for, for all of this. <laughs> you missed that? The guy from uh, Los Angeles Film School that was getting credit for being on the panel? No, I missed that. Oh. Son of a gun. <laughs> We try it. We try to make this a well-rounded experience for everybody. Get credit. Beautiful thing. So, um, so how how old now is the film festival? What year are we in here? This is our eighth year. Uh, you know, you hear a lot of festivals and even events barely make it past a third year, and so uh, a lot of support uh, in the, the film community. Um, here in Georgia, and I guess my own stubbornness, we just keep going and going. Uh, and in fact, yeah, I've had several people ask the question, sort of, well, what did you do during COVID? Uh, we, we were at our party when we found out that South By was canceled. Uh, and then by the next year, things still weren't you know, right yet, but we had an outdoor event so that we could just keep going and keep celebrating filmmakers. And we, and we were doing podcasts then instead of just simply doing big panels. We had everybody up on a stage and recorded for everybody then. That's fantastic. What are some of the bigger changes from year one to now that you've you've kind of implemented to kind of either grow the festival or, you know, correct things that you were like, yeah, we could have done that better, like based on audience, you know, input or, or filmmaker input or anything like that? I, it, you know, it's really interesting. Most of the, the folks that we have coming here, because of where we're located, uh, have never been to a film festival at all. In fact, um, uh, I love the first timers. <laughs> I, I do too. I feel like, yeah, well, I'll just leave that alone. Uh, but uh, so they don't know what to expect. And so it feels like every year we're having to reintroduce what a film festival is to a new group of people. Um, so, you know, there's a lot of, I think a, a lot of folks sort of come to the idea of like, oh, is there anybody famous there that I would know? And while I understand where that's coming from, like we're not that type of festival, we're more of a filmmaker festival. Right. We want people to come and show their work and be able to celebrate them and what they're doing and help build an audience here for them. Um, and then, you know, my experience, I'm originally from West Virginia, so when I got down here to Georgia, uh, you know, everyone talks about the Southern hospitality, and it really is true, and a lot of that sort of comes with supporting people, and so we're, our festival is built around sort of catching people on the way up and supporting them going forward. Um, so trying to get people to understand that you're not necessarily going to know who these people are, mm -hmm. but you should come out and have a good time and see these amazing films that you won't see anywhere else. Like that, that's the biggest thing we've tried to do is just to educate people of what they're going to experience. One thing I really enjoyed so far, um, uh, it, I think it happened by happenstance, but I guess it was kind of bound to happen, was we're all uh, staying, uh, myself and some of the filmmakers were all staying in the same hotel, which means we all come down for breakfast around the same time, and now we've started having breakfast together, yeah. and I really enjoyed that, and that's actually something I will miss of that, because it's, you know, because you, you, you have, uh, like, not, not I, you gotta have your morning coffee anyway, but very rarely do I get to get up in the morning and immediately just start talking about you know uh, uh, the filmmaking process or distribution or marketing or any of these other things that I'm passionate about uh, you know if I'm at home and I'm doing this it's just arguing about who's going to take the dog out uh, and, and and deal with that so the, the, it's a sl slightly better way of waking up in the morning we were, um, we were talking earlier on the alumni panel about the fact that I tell our students all the time you're not going to be around as many uh, like-minded, like interested people as you will be in school. And then I sort of stopped and was like, well, you know, when you go to a festival or event or something like that, that's your real opportunity to do that. It's uh, summer camp. It really, it is, yeah. Um, I, so I had a film out a few years ago called Miracle Boy, and we played the Maryland Film Festival. We're there in Baltimore. And uh, they all put us up in the same hotel. And I remember coming down and literally bumping into Gilbert Gottfried. And, you know, I felt horrible about that um because like i wanted to say hello but instead i have bumped him and you know who knows probably wasn't his best experience of the day but there's so many other people just simply being in proximity with 
creative people and people who are uh, you know trying to better themselves and trying to share their expression and everything that's just, that's what you want you just want everybody you know close together do you think it helps uh, in your teaching? Because uh, I think there are two different kinds of, of film school teachers, right? There's the, the the academic theory teachers, and then there's the empirical data. I have done this, and I'm teaching you based on my own successes and failures plus curriculum teachers. Do you find that uh, having been a filmmaker helps with your know, rapport with the students, uh, credibility, all of those different things? <laughs> I, I would say our students... Uh, my, my main experience with students is that they can look at you and you can tell them something and then I can bring somebody else in who maybe has done nothing but they will tell them the exact same thing and they will believe them and not me. You just described my marriage. I, well, maybe, maybe mine too. Who knows? Um, so, you know, it's a, one of those things where what I've tried to do is, is to bring people, as you said, who've had the experience as well and they're often people that I've met when, from my own festival experiences or other things like that and give them the opportunity to be able to talk about themselves to our students. And those, often they're telling the same stories that I would have told. Mm -hmm. And our students are like, oh, I hear it better coming out of this person's mouth than, than yours. Um, however it takes for people to get the message, get the message. Um, I'm not so uh, egotistical to believe like you need to listen to me. Uh, I, I just need you to hear it. So how, whatever I can do to make people hear uh, the, the good word of, of filmmaking, I, I want to do that. Have you, have you heard of our Lord and Savior, Andre Tarkovsky? Uh, you know, that kind of stuff. Uh, it's, uh, funny, it's funny you say that. I had a conversation last night uh, where myself and one of the filmmakers had a bit of a, uh, a row over who the true godfather of independent cinema was. So uh, they, uh, they were abs ad adamant that it was uh, uh, John Cassavetes. And I said, yeah, you got to give John Sales his, his due. So it was a, but that's a conversation you can have amongst filmmakers and friends and uh, not something I'm going to have, you know, the next month or so when everybody goes home. So uh, what's the, um, what is, do you think from your, from your student's point of view, the hardest aspect of filmmaking to grasp? Is it? Is it something like the technical aspects, like uh, cinematography, lighting, stuff like that? Or is it the business aspects of budgeting, accounting, uh, marketing, sales? Where do you see that most filmmakers tend to, this is where we need to spend a little extra time on? I tend to believe that it's more of the personal stuff, personal development stuff. Belief in themselves, belief in what they're doing is the right thing. Uh, I've heard several th people talk today about how, and in fact, there was a good question in one of the panels about what do you do about all the naysayers? And there's nothing you can do. Like, and, and as someone else pointed out, most naysayers, it has nothing to do with you. It's, that's their own stuff. Um, and, and so what do you do? You've got to believe in yourself. And most of the student filmmakers that I meet, they still struggle with that. They still struggle with believing in themselves and that the thing that they're doing is worthwhile and that people care. But honestly, sometimes, again, it comes back to this, not everybody does care. Uh, so you've got to believe that what you're doing is worthwhile so you can keep going. Because if you don't believe, then who, who else will? Because most of this stuff, especially this weekend, it's the enthusiasm, that you really care about those things, and those translate to other people, and they, like they get that. But if you don't care, then you can't do the other things. Uh, technically, I would say that you know it comes to that, that saying about uh, if you want to learn, no one can stop you. And if you don't, no one can help you. Right. Uh, if you want to learn how to run whatever the camera is, we were, I was talking with somebody earlier, uh, they said, oh, I've got all these uh, hard drives with old films I don't want anybody to ever see. And I was like, I have mini DV tape of the same thing. We had that conversation at breakfast too. <laughs> Actually, oddly enough, I was we were talking about uh, uh, transferring old, uh, like Super 8 footage, Super 16 footage. I was talking about, I found a whole box of mini DVs and HDVs that I had to digitize. It was a whole, oh, yeah. yeah, totally, absolutely. It was with uh, Trisha, uh, Trisha. Oh, yeah. we, were, we were chatting with her yeah. as well about some stuff. I, I have tons of stuff on VHS tape and Super VHS, if you can remember that. Um, and you know, all of those things, there's a change and a transition in the technology, and if you want to learn, you will. Um, we were talking about Haskell Wexler earlier, who, um, uh, he was the DP for Mate One, and I did a documentary about that. And Haskell was shooting, you know, uh, 16, 30, uh, 30, 35. 35, thank you. I was like, where did the math go? Uh, 35, but he also shot plenty of other formats 
because it, that's not the thing. The thing isn't like I have to only shoot this format, but rather what's the format that tells the story? What do I need to know to make this happen? How do I manipulate the tools that are available to tell the story that I want to tell? Whatever the tools are, you figure them out. Um, and if you're not willing to figure them out, then you, maybe the story's not as strong for you and you need to find another story or find another job. That, that's true. Uh, you know, so far I've, I've had an opportunity to speak with so many filmmakers here and everyone seems to be having a great time. Everyone seems to, you know, really love the, uh, again, the campus is, is great. Um, you know, uh, you know, I had an opportunity to speak with some folks about like the state of Georgia and, you know, what life outside of Atlanta or out here is like, you know, for filmmakers and stuff like that. And, and how there is absolutely a, uh, a, a, there's a thriving buzz that is happening out here. And, and that is really great to hear. Um, and uh, so uh, that, that's great. What are your some of your future ambitions for the festival? That's an interesting question. And number one top of my list is I want to be able to pay the filmmakers. Um, you know, not, not trying to get people rich or anything like that, but just be able to, to compensate them. Mm -hmm. um, I don't, I don't know about you. Uh, I've got a little film on uh, Amazon, and they send me a you know two dollar check every month. Yeah. And like, I did that with some writing. I did. Yeah. yeah, and and it's not that it's getting me rich, but every every month I see that, I'm, I'm just reminded. Okay, I, I I can do this. I just need to keep doing this, and to be able to compensate filmmakers for being at festivals. Because I I don't know about you, but I've played a lot of festivals where like not only do you not get paid to have your film there you have to do all of the travel and the lodging and everything else. Um, and it always reminds me of going to an academic conference where you have to pay to get there so that you can talk, yeah. you know? So I, that's the top of my list is I want to be able to pay filmmakers to be able to, um, to show their work. Um, but, you know, beyond that, I, little things like we want to partner with film impact georgia they give out two grants a year and we'd like to be able to to work with them and be able to ha give out a grant uh for filmmakers in the southern and rural parts of georgia as opposed to just atlanta um you know we want to be able to connect out we are we cover a 40 georgia has a lot of counties yeah. and they have a lot of counties uh, and we cover a 41 county uh, regional area in the southern part of the state and we'd like to be able to do sort of a traveling road show to be able to take films to the, each of those counties and, and show them. Other than that, I, I don't, I personally, I don't want us to get too much bigger. I'd love for us to uh, partner with uh, Georgia Theater Company, which has a few theaters around here, to be able to do some stuff. Um, but I like the, I'd like for us to keep about the size and just be able to have more filmmakers be here. Mm -hmm. um, it, we have more film, filmmakers attend this year than ever before. Um, because I personally want those morning at the Wingate eating breakfast together kind of stories. Yeah. Like that's, that's what I want to have happen. Um, and I, I want to have things like our students running in and talking to people about you know, their experiences. Um, that stuff is what really means to me. I, one of the things, my first real, in my mind, my real festival was uh, Kukuloris in North Carolina. Mm -hmm. And I credit Dan Brawley for so many ideas that I have about what festivals should be. You know, been to Sidewalk, been to, to South By, been to a lot of different festivals. Uh, but Kukuloris is amazing in the fact that there's no prizes. It's, it's really, it's a fun community-wide. They have places all over town. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you can just go and be a part of the festival. And if I had a big goal, it would be for us to be able to be a Kukuloris type festival uh, here in South Georgia. What, what, if anything, do you think keeps uh, the local population here in Valdosta, is, it would keep them from coming here to watch these films in mass? Because, you know, you've got parking in, yeah. and it's a beautiful campus. The, the projection's great. The, the atmosphere's good. The filmmakers obviously all have very interesting stories and, and, and people want to meet filmmakers. It just is a good thing to have. So what do you think keeps people, not to say that the, the crowds aren't good, uh, but what could make it so that the irresistible to the local population to get here, do you think? I, I think generally speaking, we, we face a uh, struggle a lot of uh, universities and colleges have, which is that town and gown sort of um, issue of 
there's a lot of folks who just for whatever reason don't feel comfortable coming to a college campus mm -hmm. um, so they just don't um, but I, I can't think of anybody that we've been able to get here who hasn't been excited yeah. and hasn't enjoyed the experience uh, but just getting people there the first time because they already have preconceptions of what things are going to be and and so forth uh, we have plenty of parking but uh, it's 200 feet away instead of five feet and you know, so that's sort of an issue for some folks um, but I mean beyond that cause I think you're coming from out of town so you don't have any of those preconceived notions and everything seems great so and I drove where the parking is <laughs> exactly uh, and I'm a large man I don't want to walk that 200 feet but I will tell you it's a beautiful 200 feet well, thank you very much <laughs> um, so I, mean, I think that's the difference I think it's just people have preconceived notions of what things are um, and if if we just need to get past those and just get them to have that first experience and then they'll keep coming back because we see that we see people who are from town who've come from multiple festivals in a row that they don't have a particular film in the festival they don't know anybody other than uh me and a handful of people because our students change in and out so they're not coming for them it's they get it and they are coming we just we need to get more people to get that and the, for the last question uh, is I want to talk just briefly about the wonderful volunteers here at the festival because they have all been wonderful, uh, both in finding and chasing me down to do interviews like this, uh, but also in assisting uh, you know, the filmmakers and making sure that they're taken care of and make sure the, the films are starting and good and audiences get in and stuff like that. Uh, where do you usually get all the, the volunteers from? Most of them are our students. We have a student film organization that they're a part of. Uh, our students help uh, screen films that come in from all over the world um, and their excitement to be able to be a part of this uh, it's great that things are happening in Atlanta we are not in Atlanta uh, and so we have a lot of students who are disconnected from that and this is their first real big opportunity to be a part of these things so they understand that this is a, an opportunity and they take advantage of it um, but to your point and this is what we're really lucky about uh, we do have a lot of really good, kind students and people in our community who are willing to volunteer. Uh, I will say the top of that list is my wife, uh, who... Oh, good call. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, and just being able to... I mean, honestly, when I talk to filmmakers or other people that come to town, I, just as you're saying, that's the first thing they talk about is how great everybody is and kind and welcoming and generous. And for that reason, we're able to do a lot of things that maybe other people have to have a budget 10 times our size to be able to do just because we really strive to be good, welcoming people. Southern hospitality at its finest. Uh, well, I want to I want to think I'm going to let you go because it is such I know you are flying all around this place Absolutely. trying to make sure all the wheels are staying on the bus and all the plates are spinning at the same time. So I want to thank you for sitting down for a little bit and chatting with me. Uh, I'll let you get back to it. But uh, uh, I would say to everyone else, if uh, you are a filmmaker and you're looking to submit to next year's film festival, where would the go ahead and find that? We'll be on Film Freeway, and our uh, uh, submissions will open up, if not the end of April, then the middle of May. Uh, we open up right around the same time of the year, and, and we have a brief window where we are completely free. Uh, if you're a film festival, you know the, the difficulties we have with uh, international fest, uh, filmmakers who can't pay because of different economic things going on political that we have nothing to do with so we've attempted to sort of have a window where folks can take advantage of that and submit it's well it's our very very early deadline uh but you know if you if you want to take advantage of it, even if you're not from iran uh please do so and you know, get that free submission in uh, but if you'd like to pay for us at a later time we'll take that too the micro the micro early bird exactly absolutely yeah well all right fantastic and otherwise uh it's, it's like south georgia film festival dot com or south georgia film dot com okay just making sure and of course you know where we uh, i think met up originally was twitter or x or whatever or twix whatever we're calling it. your left twix i'm right twix here we go and uh so yeah and um I, I thank you again i'm gonna let you get back to it uh great festival so far thank you for having me thank you I thank appreciate you it.